thanks for taking the time to do this today. I do really appreciate it. So let's start this off really simply. How are you and how's the tour going? Uh, I'm doing great. This is a day off and I actually got to come home for one day. So that's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, the tour is going awesome. We're, we're real, uh, real happy with this one. It, it's been a great lineup. We've made good friends with everybody on the tour. We are good friends with, with a few of the guys. And so it's been a, uh, just, just a real fun time. Yeah, I know it's looking at the dates that this is a day off for you, at least in a little period we had a day off. What does a day off on tour with any given sin look like most of the time for you? Uh, so if if we're not close enough to be home after a show, uh, uh, yeah. a lot of times we like to get a KOA and then hook up the bus and like uh, just camp and grill some things. And, you know, it's real cheap. It's like 80 bucks. We can just sleep everybody, you know, and it's a nice little yeah, assuming it's not the dead of winter. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun. Yeah, we just kind of hang out and, uh, you know, we don't party too hard, you know, on a day off. We try to, you know, especially the singer, we got to like some vocal rest or something. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we, we like to relax and uh, just enjoy a little nature, and get out of the pavement for a second. I love it. The tour life, particularly when you're uh, trooping around America. Do you got any tips? Because uh, you're like, near the latter end of this fairly significant tour, any tips you can offer that you do to stay healthy and in good form while, while doing such a big tour? Uh, definitely bring food with you the best you can, <laughs> uh, because you're just, you're just going to, you don't have time. You don't have time for anything, but like a gas station or whatever hospitality might be offered at the venue, um, which sometimes is awesome, but sometimes it might just be bar food. So it is, you know, it is for bring your own food, figure out ways, uh yeah we're trying to bring little hot pots and little things that we can do you know to, to try to do that uh tuna you know fruits anything you can keep on you know keep the nutrition up because it's tough mm -hmm. to find it yeah yeah it's almost like um going to a festival for a few days you know you, you're gonna get sick of living on burgers right right and pizza i, like, I love pizza but there's sometimes that's all you can afford for you know uh and actually fills you up uh, so Bring your own food. Yeah, that's that's my biggest tip. Banging, I love it. You've uh, you've done ten shows so far in this tour with four left, I believe. What's been the highlight so far for you? Um, so I I just really love that we the, the further away we get, like if there's people there that are singing the songs and really know them, like that's a big highlight. If we're if we're real far away uh, from where we start, you know, because um, this is still as you said, we're kind of we're kind of at the uh, ladder in this now, but you never know what your crowds are going to be like the further you get away from your, your, your main source of, uh, you know, fans. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool to see, to see that. That's a big highlight. We played a brand new venue um, up in New Hampshire. It was really awesome. They just redid it. And, and they had this uh, really great screen in the back that like had transformers coming out of it with our name on it. And like just a bunch of like graphics and things that were like almost 3D. It, it, it was really cool. That was a cool highlight. We've never seen anything like that before. Uh, but they just built this place out, and uh, we're trying to let everybody know that it exists, so they'll come play at this place. So that was a great highlight. Um, I'd say j just seeing a lot of the, uh, the people that uh, we interact with on social media and stuff uh, throughout, you know, the year, um, yeah. and actually getting to meet them, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, we have people in our, our fan group and then people that uh, come to our social media sites that are always, always posting. And then you get to meet them in person. You get to make a personal relationship. That's always great about tour. Oh, I love that it's been going so well. And how are the songs from War Within going down? What have you been playing from the album live? Um, we've been playing pretty much everything. This tour we had, we're doing a co-headline tour with another group called Shallow Side, which are very awesome. So I would tell the UK definitely to check them out if you haven't. Um, so we've had like uh, shorter sets, like 45 minutes to 50 minutes because we're sharing the stage. Yeah. But so we're playing pretty much everything but two songs off that album right now. Yeah. And it, it, the, the, the reaction, has it been pretty st like stand out? Have you really been surprised by how people have taken to the songs live? Uh, yeah, I've been surprised there. I've been surprised how people have taken, especially in the UK. We've gotten so much support for this album in the UK, especially. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of great reviews, a lot of people coming in asking to interview like yourself, and, and we're very grateful for that. Um, and, and it's really cool to see the music uh, going somewhere else than just the United States as well for us. Yeah. 
uh, we've always wanted to hit the European market. So it's really awesome that it's, it seems to be, seems to be working out, you know. Well, sticking with uh, War Within, did the early success you had with the singles and obviously the insane streaming numbers put pressure on you to kind of deliver with this debut album? Or did you not even think about that? Uh, man, it, it's, it's a little bit of both. As soon as we realized we were going to do an album, because we, we kind of played the single game for, for a while. We were independent. Uh, we put out a lot of singles on our own. We found that that was financially for us the best move to go forward. Um, and also, you know, try to reach as many people as possible. So we had a lot of uh, singles we were writing and we're like, we need a home for them. But now the rest of the album has to be at least as good as all the singles we just put out because they're going to be on here too. So th there was a bit of pressure at, at the back end of this, but at the same time, we were like, just do what we did before. And <laughs> everything should work out, you know? So we, 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 I put pressure that might should not have been there, but in the end, I'm, I'm really happy with the result. Okay. Well, the end result is phenomenal, as you said, and it is Thank reaching you. so many people around the world. But going back to the early days of its inception, did, did, did you then create a vision for what you wanted the record to be overall? Was it a matter of just let's play and see what we get? Right. So um, when this band started, uh, uh, myself and the guitarist uh, kind of sat in his living room and started. Uh, the first three songs we wrote were the first three singles that we put out. So... We were kind of in that one spot a few years ago, um, writing those three songs. But what we realized is we, we kind of put together like a list of songs was kind of like about inner turmoil and having hope and, and persevering through things like that. So we, we tried to keep a good bit of this album themed towards that message and that, mm. that, that kind of category. So it, I would say generally it's about that, but we also went into every song just, just being like, let's write a really good tune that we're all happy with as well, you know. Did did much end on much end up on the cutting room floor, or did you kind of nail the amount of songs you wanted? Uh, yeah, so a good many songs that we have did not make it to the album. We have a lot more. They might end up on album two. Some of them we felt like maybe didn't mesh with what we had currently. Uh, so there was there was a good many songs that. Could have made it, but did not, and maybe make it later. And sometimes we still play those in our live set as well, because people do like them, uh, uh, at least in the live performance uh, situation. So uh, everything we write doesn't make it, but we want to make sure we have the, the best thing, our best foot going forward when it comes to the music we're putting out. Yeah, yeah, like pure, pure cool. quality. While those songs may be great in their own right, you just put them to the side for now. Maybe you'll come back to them later on. How easy across the album was it to balance out your natural anthemic sound with some of the more experimental aspects on the rock? And I want to use two tracks as an example, if you don't mind, that I think are good to compare. Another Life and Insidious uh, are, while very much um, Any Given Sin songs, are quite different. They are. And... and uh... Well, I was telling you earlier that the first three songs we wrote, that would have been Dynamite was first, um, Another Life was second, and Insidious was number three. Yeah. So, And they're all quite, uh, at least to me, quite different from one another. Mm. But they were the first three we kind of we kind of rolled on. Um, it just kind of happened that way. There were, there were ideas that all of us already had uh, and when we started together. So I think these just kind of, these were things that all of us wanted to work on already for our own reasons. And then they came together and it's just, it just happened to be, you know what I mean? Um, but what, what I like is all, all of us come from slightly different backgrounds. And so I think that that really helps the variety of, of sounds that we might end up with songs. Um, and I never want to be, I never want to see an album that we have be completely homogenous. You know what I mean? I'd mm. like it to have, uh, you know, some variety in, in the way that it's, it's approached and the influences you might hear and things like that. So no hard and fast rules, as it were. If you do wish to experiment, right. you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. What was a particularly challenging aspect for you personally of making this record? Uh, well, uh, finances are always a troubling aspect, but, but uh, past that, like creatively, um, yeah. we had a lot of fun doing it. I, I don't know that it was challenging as much as it was like, you, know, you, you want to put out the best thing you can and you're, you're putting everything you can into it, but, but you love doing it. So it's, 
it didn't feel like a challenge as much as it did like a release. It's like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm trying to do. Um, so that, that feels really good. I, I'd say all of us, we, we're trying to push ourselves to be better musicians and, and do things we, we didn't think we could do before. You know, maybe get pushed in the studio a little more. Mm. Hit that note you didn't think you could hit. Things like that. So uh, that definitely happened on this record. So I think we all got pushed a little bit in, in directions we're not used to uh, in, in the best possible way. But uh, in the end, I think I think we all just love it. And, and so it's 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 just fun, you know. I mean, it's amazing. It's always awesome to hear that 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 that's your experience. Even when you talk about pushing yourself, it still sounds from how you say it that you really enjoyed doing that. Absolutely. It, it, I'll tell you back to the advice, like make sure you love doing this before you go out <laughs> on tour. You know what I mean? Absolutely make sure you love it. Uh it's 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 the best time of your life if you do. You know what I mean? That's how it works. What, what about um, time constraints when it comes to creating a record? W was that uh, an area that you found was an easy thing to gel with or a struggle? Um, I, I, I'd say it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like sometimes we can make it work. Sometimes we have, uh, so all the guys still, we have to work some sort of a day job here and there. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. off tour so you're trying to make all that work with everybody um trying to make sure that you can get in with the studio and do that sort of thing so it's just scheduling can be an issue but when it comes to this stuff we, we all put that kind of first um in, in our scheduling so it, i mean it works out we get it done uh i'd love to be have my own home studio i could just sit here and just write all day and, and it'd be you know top quality not you know but uh it, it really just comes down to scheduling and figuring that kind of thing out. But other than that, we're, you know, that that's our focus. It's the modern struggle, um, right. folks. Buy right. buy any given sins records merch and help them build their own home studio. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is has there been a track? Uh, and this is, I guess, paying attention to the numbers online more than anything else. It has there been a track mm -hmm. from the album that you've been surprised to see resonate more than with more than any other with the fan base? Yeah. So, um, and, and you mentioned there, Insidious was one of the tracks, at least for me personally. Uh, I didn't know that that one uh, ended up uh, here in the states. A series or series section of Um It was a number one song on their Biggins Countdown for a few weeks in a row. And we didn't even think that that would be a single in, in our mind when we first wrote it. We really didn't. Uh, we were just like, oh man, it's a great song. It needs to be, you know, in the repertoire. But then we had people come to us and be like, I don't know, man, I think you should push it. And so we did, and it ended up doing really well. <clears throat> uh, so sometimes the band isn't always the best, you know, judge when it comes to marketability of, of their stuff. You know, that's something we've learned and are trying mm. to, you know, let the reins go a little bit, you know, and let some people uh, let us know that. Um, because that, that was, uh, you know, our, our number one example of how we could be wrong about what we feel like, and then the fans loved it. So so we're, we're really happy uh, how it turned out. But yeah, that was one we didn't expect. Oh, that's wonderful. It, it is a phenomenal uh, track in itself. Um, going back to what you sort of said at the very early part of this interview, when we talked about uh the expansion and how it's reaching ears in the uk and europe and so on can you put your finger on why that might be the case it's no easy task for any young um touring band to cross to our shores right uh i don't know what what i what i feel I, and i don't know this to be tr completely true this is what i feel about uh europe and, and the united states when it comes to rock music I think mm. the people here in the United States who love rock music love it just as much as people in the UK or Europe. But I think that the UK and Europe love rock music more, a, a broader group of people like rock music more than here in the United States. Um, we, we take a big, uh, bigger interest in hip hop and pop and, and country and things like that. But I think the UK and Europe just have a larger base. Uh, and that's not to put down any fans in rock music here in the United States. They're just as hardcore. Yeah, but I think they're they're fewer over the years um, from where we came, and I think Europe for a lot of American bands, I think Europe is a real big breaking point for them um, if they can get into that market. Uh, I just feel like there's there's a a broader appreciation for a lot of different types of music in Europe, and, and I think there's a, a especially mainland Europe, if if you will, 
I think uh, for a lot of theatrical kind of uh, rock bands and things like that, that really have a, like a show kind of into it is, 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 is in that as well. And that's something we want to get to as this, the budget gets bigger and <laughs> things, you know, yeah, so yeah, that's, well, my, I, that's my hobo assessment of it all. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because yeah, I mean, your music, um, I like to think of it almost as stadium rock. And while that is of course uh, way down in your future, the idea of playing stadiums in Europe, across England and the UK and all that, right. we've got so many football stadiums. It's just perfect for things like that. <laughs> yeah. We can't wait. <laughs> um, I mean, you must be looking at Europe and sort of, because of course you can land, you can fly over and land in Europe and do X amount of countries in the same amount of days as you can in American right. States. Um, obviously you're out again, in September and October around the US. Um, is that it for the remainder of the year? And are you thinking about Europe for, and the UK for 2024? We, we, it is, it is a, I'll tell you this, it is discussion in camp to get over to at least the UK in 2024. Um, it's, it's just working out all the logistics of that and things, you know, you know how it goes. Uh, yeah. But we, we, this is a definite one <laughs> from this camp to get over to the UK and to get over to Europe as quickly as possible. So we're trying to make that happen on our end. Uh, if 2024 happens, we're going to be very excited. So, But we're, we're working towards it. Yeah, we don't have great uh, summers over here, of course, because of the weather and stuff like that. But we do have great <laughs> festival seasons across. So we're coming to an end of it now. But yeah, I could see you at Download, Bloodstock, Reading, Leeds, Walken, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. We will be there eventually, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you then see now as the biggest challenge to continuing to spread the name of Any Given Sin around the world? And how do you plan to overcome it? I, I think the biggest challenge, uh, at least for us, when we were independent, it was having the capital to really do so. And then having the um, uh, kind of networking that we needed to do that. So... Uh, we ended up going with Mascot Records, um, which has a huge Netherlands-based uh, uh, main office. Um, I'm very interested in, in, in getting the European market uh, and things like that. We felt like that was the best fit for us. So that was kind of our way of looking to overcome um, the capital end, the networking end, and having someone on the other side of the pond, if you will, to, to push us and, and keep pushing this band forward you know, all around. So it seems like it's just a matter of time with that. I mean, of course, Mascot Record is you are label buddies with some great bands that sort of fit the vibe as well. So um, I feel like it's just a matter of time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Victor, we reached the point of interview where we change things up a little bit. This is Ozzy Osbourne, and in his head are a ton of randomized cards. I will be pulling a few out with questions okay. on them, and you're going to answer them if you don't mind. All right. Okay, we start with this one, number 13. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? It's a very controversial pineapple question. Pineapple on this. pizza? Oh, uh, for me, nah. I don't like pineapple, period. So. <laughs> oh, oh, right, the full stop, yeah? The full stop, yeah. Nah, I hear you, I hear you. Um, just to cause arguments, though. All right, next one. What was the last movie you watched, and did you enjoy it? Oh, gosh. Uh, John Wick 4, and I absolutely enjoyed it. Unchain your brain fun, right? Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is the best thing about being in your band? Uh, we're all great friends. Like, oh. it's just, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, our our tech and driver is uh, the cousin of our guitarist who's been, you know, our friend forever. Our tour manager has been with uh, some of the band for 20 years, you know, in some cases, you know what I mean? I've known them for that long. So it's, uh, we have a big family and our center group, our, our uh, 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 fan group is um, really tight and we've built a nice little community. And I think that's uh, my highlight. Yeah. You know, that's that's what you want. Want I mean, you're going to be touring, you're going to be in a bus with these people. You, you want to feel that tight to them. I, I will ask and follow that up with, what do you do then when you're kind of maybe just getting on each other's nerves just a little bit, what do you do to kind of avoid any conflict? Uh, well, everybody at this point has known each other for so long. We know when to stop, when to let people, you know what I mean? Like everybody's known like, all right, Vic had a bad night. He might like, just leave him alone on that for a second. Give him some space. Or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like everybody kind of knows. Um, of course, 
stress of the road, things happen, the worst gets said, whatever. It, it, it's, it's like a family, you get over it and, and we, we move on. It's all good. That's it, families fight, you still love each other. Do you think you, and I suppose we could do the whole band here, do you think you could survive a zombie apocalypse? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, well, apocalypse tells me that everything's ending and I'm gonna die anyway, so I would say no, you know, just based off the, uh, the criteria. But um, I, I think I'd last longer than some people, but less than others. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, have you ever laughed so hard you cried or peed? Yes, I have laughed so hard uh, I have pooped. That is a real thing. I was in the Navy, the U.S. Navy, for a long time, and I was uh, blessed with many um, hilarious jackasses around me, and uh, you know, good times. So, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay, what is a fun? An emphasis on the word fun. What is a fun conspiracy theory that you could be convinced is true? Um, <sighs> one one that I could be mm. convinced is true. I don't know. I mean, I, I could never be convinced it's true that the earth is flat, but it's my favorite one, if that works. It's my favorite one. I think it's fun. Um, sometimes they're even like a little convincing for a second. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and not to put anyone who believes this down, like I'm just not convinced by it. Perhaps you keep gathering evidence and now we'll see what happens. <laughs> like, no, I hear, I hear you. Um, there's great fun and laughs to be had by watching videos of um, flat earthers being proved wrong. And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. so yeah, but each to our own, right? Um, yeah. What video game defined your childhood? Oh man, let's see. Uh, I would say probably Mario Kart. Yeah. How Super far Nintendo back Mario do we go? Uh, we're going back to like, it would have been the early 90s. I'd have been like 10-ish, you know. Um, it, it was like they had four controllers. And you could have four friends there. It was the only game I was really good at at the time. <laughs> I could beat people. So I think that was like, that was like my thing, uh, the Mario Kart, Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, a couple more. We've got, uh, what is the most decadent thing you've ever eaten? Oh, wow. Mm. Huh. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty cheap and I have the palate of a five-year-old. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of difficult to, get, it's difficult to say I've eaten something that decadent. Um, I have had like a $60 bowl of lobster mac and cheese before. Um, from uh, here in the United States, New Hampshire. It was delicious. Um, <laughs> it was like a half a pound of lobster on top of mac and cheese with a lot of different cheeses. Um, it was 60 bucks. So that's, that's definitely the most I've ever paid for some mac and cheese uh, well, in that, my life. But it was, it, was, it was worth it. I'm going to say it was worth it. It sounds, for that price, they <laughs> bloody better have piled it up with lobster. My goodness. <laughs> yes. Okay, second last one. What was the last great book you read? Oh, let's see. Um, so uh, when the uh, Game of Thrones series came out, I started like, I was like, this is badass. And I started reading it. And all I got through the first book, but I was like, man, the book is so much better than the first <laughs> season of this show. And I was like, I need to keep going. But then I didn't. But that was probably the last book I read. I'm not good at reading books. I need to read more books. But like, that's it. <laughs> even even if you carry on reading, he's not finished. George R. R. Martin hasn't finished them, and he may never. That's so, true. I know. You know, did you did you finish the show? I did finish the show. I have I have mixed feelings about the last season, but as most do, so yeah. No. Yeah, join the club there. Absolutely right. Yeah. One more for you, and it is uh, oh, it's a silly one. What is your favorite dinosaur? Ooh, it's a great question. I'm going to have to go, I'm going to forget the name of it, but it was, it was, uh, it was a pterodactyl, but it was the biggest flying one. Um, oh. Uh, I might look it up. Where's my phone? Pet, pet. Is it yeah, a P yeah, one? It, it's a P pet. one. It's a P oh, one. It's there on the tip of my tongue. Oh. I know, mine, mine too. Mine too. But that's, that's my favorite because it's like the biggest flying thing that can get away. It, it can attack you like, you know, an F-16 in, in no time. 
it's pretty much like unstoppable. So that's the one I would go with. It's terrifying. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's where the dragon myth comes from in all, you know, human history. It's like finding those things, you know. Yeah, yeah, like finding, yeah, finding the bones of them. You would just think dragon immediately. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. Um, Victor, so, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Enjoy the rest of the tour. Hope the last part is as successful as the first part. Enjoy the tour in September and October as well. And I hope to whatever God wants to hear me that we see you over in the UK in 2024. Thank you. Absolutely. We can't wait. And thank you for having me, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, Consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?